flexors of the wrists and fingers. Starting off with flexor carpi radialis. We're going to come to the medial epicondyle of the humerus, which is on the medial humerus. If you follow it down over the ridge, you'll feel a real bumpy, bony landmark right there. And that's where a lot of your flexors will attach. Then we come down to the base of the second and third metacarpals. And we can see how this muscle would flex the wrist. It crosses right through there in the carpal tunnel. We've got palmaris longus, also on the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and attaching into the flexor retinaculum and palmar aponeurosis. So right there in the palm of your hand, if you imagine grabbing a baseball, that was that's how you would grip it, by cupping your hands that way, and then also flexing the wrist. And we've got the flexor carpi ulnaris, so we're on the pisiform, and the hook of the hammy and the base of the fifth metacarpal. So I'll show you how to find those here. It can take some practice to locate them on yourself, but looking at a real skeleton can always help with that. So I'll show you here. The pisiform is a little floating bone and the hook of the hammy is a little hook that comes off the hammy and then the base of the fifth metacarpal. Coming through the carpal tunnel and back up the arm we have an attachment on, guess what, the medial epicondyle of the humerus again. This muscle has two heads. That is going to be the humeral head going to the humerus. We have an ulnar head coming to the posterior surface, proximal two-thirds of the ulna. So flexing the wrist from the ulnar side. And then next we've got the flexor digitorum superficialis. This one attaches on either side of the middle phalanges. Kind of interesting how it has these tendons on either side and then they come together and run down each finger. Show you here on Andy, either side there. It's kind of like the reins on a horse. And then this muscle comes back down. You can see how this carpal tunnel gets crowded and why people can have issues with it if they are extending their wrist too much. It really puts a lot of pressure on those tendons and the nerves. But yeah, we're coming back up to the medial epicondyle, the humerus, and then this muscle also attaches in between your radius and ulna. And it's uh, an interosseous membrane right in there between those two forearm bones. A little bit thicker of a belly and meatier than the other flexors. We've got flexor digitorum profundus, our last one. This one goes all the way out to the bases of the distal phalanges. So I think of it like profundus, it's profound, it goes all the way out so it can flex the fingers and it flexes the wrist. But it doesn't cross the elbow, it just attaches into the ulna here. And you can see how all these muscles together help to flex the wrist and let you grab things. If you found this video helpful, please like it, share a comment, and spread it around. And I'll see you next time.